Hey everybody, what's going on? So in today's video, I want to go over a Mythic Plus build for the Rester Druid in patch 10.0.5. I want to go over your stats, your talents, your healing playstyle, your damage playstyle, and utility. Now before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video. You can also find me streaming on twitch.tv slash nagilop as well as a link to our Discord in the description below. All right, so first, I wanna go over your stats. Now, for your everyday Mythic Plus player, hello, Dragon Friend, we are going to do item levels one, haste, two, mastery, three, burst and crit are number four. Now again, this is for your everyday key runner, not pushing, you know, 23, 24, 25 keys. Those also very little different because you're gonna to wanna to focus on DPS more. Um, so you would pretty much just swap verse for mastery in your number third priority. So now I wanna go over talents. So this is my standard setup. Um, this has changed just slightly from my last build. So if we look at the last build, this is just a generic Mythic Plus build in 10.0.0. So, you know, we went down the left side of the tree here. We got Rip, D-Line Swiftness, Primal Fury. <clears throat> when you crit with an attack, you generate a combo point in Cap Roar. So we went more DPS route. And what I've been running lately is this new build I've kind of seen pop up on Subcreation and Raider IO. And what you get with this, it's pretty much the same build. It's Life Bloom, Verdancy, but pick up Iron Fur, use that. Thick high, 6% damage reduction across the board. One of my favorites is Matted Fur. So when you use Bark Skin or Survival Instincts, you absorb, you know, 23,000 damage for eight seconds. I use Bark Skin all the time. I love it. A uh, great example is Halls of, Valor, Halls of Valor with the Wolf. When you can kind of time when things are gonna happen, you can pop it ahead of time. And there's other bosses too, uh, where you can pop that on. But as far as the difference here, we're pretty much running this way and we're still picking up protector of the pack nature's vigil for some crazy dps lacerous teachings six percent haste because we're not going to be in any form usually but when we are in a form it's going to be cat form and we're going to get six percent crit it's going to do for us just some nice damage so over here in the spec tree things haven't changed too much the things that i've changed based off what I've read, what I've experienced, and talking to other druids I know, as well as streams. So we've actually replaced Circle of Life and Death with Spring Blossoms. The reason I don't like Circle of Life and Death right now is because I found myself casting heals and hots more often, and obviously that's the case because, if you read it, your damage over time effects deal their damage in 25% less time, and your heal over time effects deal it in 15% less time. So it's made for much smoother gameplay, and you also get Spring Blossoms under the people with your efflorescence. And as you know, efflorescence is probably the most important ability here in the tree in conjunction with Life Bloom. Okay, so next I wanna go over the playstyle. And again, the playstyle has not changed much, if at all. So this is gonna be pretty quick. I'm gonna put a VOD here of a Halls on the screen so you can kind of see the playstyle generally. You want to put efflorescence down. You want to put a life bloom on yourself in the tank or the tank and DPS. And let's go over why you should do that and when you should do that. So of course we all know this is the Verdancy build. When life bloom blooms, three targets in your efflor are healed for a certain amount of HP. And the beauty of that comes in conjunction with photosynthesis. When life blooms on you, your heals tick 20% faster. When life blooms on an ally, your periodic heals on them have a 4% chance to cause it to bloom. So, generally, you always want to have life bloom on a tank and the DPS. This way, you have a 100% increased chance from this default, so a really 8% chance for life bloom to bloom. And we all know again, Verdancy, when life bloom blooms, three people are healed. So, you always want to put efflorescence under as many people as you can. You know, if we have three at melee, including the tank, I'll put it under melee. If we have three range, I'll try my best to put it under ranged. And if people aren't standing under efflorescence on range, I'll say, hey, you know, just tell them, hey, can you please send efflorescence? It'll really help out. 
no issues. I've never had anybody have any problem with that. They even have apologized for. So don't be afraid to speak up because um, it's the bread and butter of the build. Let's talk about the other piece of that. When life blooms on yourself, your periodic heals heal 20% faster. So when I will do this, is when you really need to catch up on heals. There's a lot of hots going out there for the raid or the party, pop it on myself, pop it on the tank, kind of get everybody topped off. And then I will switch over to tank and a DPS. So as you can see here on the side of this run, I have a weak aura that counts down life bloom and, and tracks it. And as you'll see, there's a white line on the life bloom bar. And what that is, is a pandemic window. And what a pandemic window is, when there's three, four, five seconds left on life bloom, you can actually recast it and it'll proc a bloom. It's very important to keep track of. It'll actually renew life bloom. And if you're really good, you can time it. So if people are taking damage, you hit life bloom on the target within the pandemic window and cast it or proc it. And that'll essentially do a free heal, a free verdancy proc. So it's almost like another spell. As far as other spells, you know, we still have Soul of the Forest. So I always try to use Swift Mend to proc this while growth increase by 50%. Cast wild growth. This is very similar to Raid for Mythic Plus. It's a ton of healing. And uh, we know with the Forest set, Efflorescence crits increase wild growth by 5% per sack, sacking to five times. So as I said in my last video about raiding, I'll link it below. You want to cast this and again, you're gonna get plus 5%, every crit's gonna give you five. You wanna cast this, Swift Mend, boom. 50%, 70%, and that crits one more time. So right there, you're at 75% increased wild growth. So again, you know, nothing different than raid, but it's a smaller party, it's five people. So as far as your other spells, not much to it. You just wanna kind of maintenance spell with Rejuve, Swift Mend emergency heals, Regrowths, again, for spot healing. And yeah, that's pretty much it for your healing rotation. So now let's talk about the damage rotation. So if you look here, Protector of the Pack, stores 5% of your healing up to 18,000. Your next moon fire consumes it. Great for single target. It hits like a truck. So always do this, always keep track of that. And then improve Sunfire. Sunfire now applies damage to all of its enemies within eight yards. Again. Fantastic, does a ton of damage, a lot of hots, or sorry, a lot of dots across the board. So now let's talk about Nature's Vigil. So Nature's Vigil, for 30 seconds, all of your single target healing also damages nearby enemy target for 20% of the healing done. This is super cool because what you do is you macro Nature's Vigil to Flourish. And Flourish, as we know, extends all the durations of the hots and increases their heal over time rate by 100%. So you're essentially doing double damage because this is ticking faster. So what this macro looks like is simple as this. Show tooltip, cast flourish, use 13, but you can ignore this. Use 13s for my trinket uh, for raid and cast nature's vigil. So these share the exact same cooldown. So that's why you want to macro them together. One less button to think about. So the way that goes is very similar to the raid ramp. So I'll get my hots out there, cast Life Bloom, cast some Rejuice, pop Eflo, and then I'll hit a Convoke, and then I'll hit Flourish. So as you can see there, Nature's Vigil's going, Flourish is going, and again, if you watch on the bot over here, you'll see just how much damage that's actually doing. Um, it's really, really cool. So other than that, I'll go into cat form, and if there's some, you know, three or four, Three or more mobs, I'll just use swipe. Get some dots going, or sorry. I'll just use swipe, get some AOE, you know, cleave going. Five combo points, I'll use ferocious bite. And I'll build up with shred. And on bosses, I'll use rake. So I need, personally, I need to get better uh, cat weaving. I'm not super good at it, um, but the higher keys I do, the more uh, necessary it is to do. So some other spells here that are really good for damage and healing is adaptive swarm so i have a weak aura and this is included included in growls pack and it'll basically tell you who to cast adaptive swarm on it'll do like a crunch bite sound and highlight the raid frame spinning dots just cast it on that cast it on cooldown you don't really need to think much about it it's kind of smart heals itself and what it does is it has 60 percent chance to split 
each time it jumps. And it also does damage and it heals and it increases the effectiveness of periodic effects on the target by 20%. So really good for juicing up heals on somebody. And again, I will link the weak orb below, use it on cooldown, easy to use spell, very effective. So now I wanna talk about defensives and utility. So a defensive for other people, and it can be yourself, but I mainly use it on other people's iron bark. It basically reduces damage they take by 20% and increases healing taken by hots by 20% for 12 seconds. I use this all the time on tanks, um, especially during tyrannical weeks. It's really beneficial. Keep an eye on this. Scenarian ward, it put a bubble on somebody and then after they take damage, it'll heal them for 40,000 over eight seconds. Very potent spell. Do not be afraid to use this. Again, this is tracked in the weak aura. I'll link below. Okay, so now let's talk about some utility. So uh, druids don't really have an interrupt per se on like eight to you know 12 second uh, cooldown like other healers do. I guess you can kind of go down in here, but skull bash. But what we do have is incapacitating roar and Ursula's Vortex, if I can click it. I'll show you here on the side. Um, this is awesome because what Incap Roar does is it incapacitates all enemies within 15 yards for three seconds and damage will cancel it. That's fine. That can be used as a mass interrupt. Kind of compare it to a, uh, a monk's sweeping kick or whatever that spell is where you AOE, you know, knock everybody over. Don't be afraid to use this. And if you can see it's right here on my shift mouse, and it'll automatically put you in the bear form. So you don't need to worry about going in the bear form and using it. You hit it, it'll automatically do it. And you're good. So the other incredible utility is Ursula's Vortex. So what this does is it basically puts a tornado on the ground. And if an enemy's in it, cast on them, it'll run out. Oh, look, it sucked back in. It's really good for this week, especially with bolstering, because when mobs have a lot of health and damage, you can just pop it and hold them in place, essentially, and DPS them down. Another one, Stampede and Roar. This is just amazing, it's great, it's awesome. No complaints about it. It does increase the movement speed by 60% for everybody in your party. This is good just to make up some time and keys. You know, everything kind of adds up. Um, kind of an oh shit button to get out of something that's, you know, projected at you. I have this macroed keybound right here. So just hitting num six on my mouse and it hits it. So yeah, that's my video on Mythic Plus Guide. Again, not a lot has changed with how the season started. So I will link that first video below. And I know I rambled a lot and it's a little more in depth with talents and I probably missed something or you probably don't agree with something, which is awesome. Please let me know below. Uh, I learned a lot from you guys with saying, hey, this isn't good. This is good. Have you thought about this? Oh, I, have, I haven't thought about that. And then just kind of bouncing ideas off me in the comments and discord. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.